So tell me a little bit about where you're at now at this point in the process. You're a few weeks, really a couple of, less than a couple of months before starting the whale of this fall. How are you feeling about it? Um, I'm feeling okay. Uh, as we're recording this video, Loyola still hasn't given us a direct answer as to if we're online or hybrid or in person. But um, assuming that uh, Los Angeles sadly will not be as, uh, how do I say, like coronavirus friendly by the time it's August, I think most likely it'll be online. Uh, we're just waiting for the news, but there's nothing I can really change. I just have to kind of enjoy the summer and read some prep books here and there for law school and um, just being ready to possibly be online. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think that most schools are going to end up going online, especially if there's an open question about it, if things might look a little shaky, it's the safer route. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to get questions on this, though. You mentioned some books that you're reading for 1L Prep. What are some of those books? Um, so obviously, just as a kind of like a funny, you know, see what a 1L experience might be like, uh, the, the classic 1L uh, book by the Harvard Law student, the former Harvard Law student. Uh, I forgot what his name was already, but that's a good book. Uh, I've been recommended a few books. By any chance, do you uh, mean Scott Turow's 1L? Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, okay. Yeah, that was 1L. Yeah, that, that's a really good book. Honestly, I've heard great things. Um, also, Getting to Maybe is a really classic one that a lot of people have recommended. Um, those are the two right now. Uh, I've heard about a few more, but I haven't even touched those. So um, we'll see about that. I think I'll start really kind of getting into those things in a few weeks uh, because Law school starts from the 17th of August for me. So I still have a little bit of time before I can really like get going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, it's good that you're reading a little bit about it and learning a little bit about the process and what 1L could look like. Does mm -hmm. Loyola tell you to do any prep in particular? Do they give you any guidelines about that or do they, do they leave it pretty open-ended? Um, so Loyola Law School, I think they're going to start telling us stuff once they give us our section assignments, which is coming up on the 20th of July. Um, so we're still waiting on that, but... In terms of other resources, they've given us like town hall meetings and various webinars with some of the professors that we can kind of get a sneak peek on things and uh, required readings though, not necessarily. Uh, there's like a Loyola book club that they've been like uh, passing around and stuff, but uh, I just think it's a little too early for them to really tell us. But I know that certain students in my incoming class were uh, given this like kind of pre 1L summer institute kind of thing i think that harvard was kind of starting where it kind of gives some students a chance to experience what one l might be like and the successes of it um there's this whole debate about like do you get invited or do you have to sign up and ultimately i think you had to get invited but um, by no means that i uh, do i think you're disadvantaged if you don't do it right right now i imagine that you could walk in day one without any prep at all with any without any book reading prior you'll learn what you need to know but at the same time there are benefits to getting ahead a little bit. And I know there are a lot of gunners who do want to do at least some prep. And there's varying schools of thought about this. I've seen some say don't do anything. I've seen some who also happen to be selling 1L prep saying that 1L prep is a good idea, but they could still be right. Who knows? But I guess you'll be able to report back a few months from now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the, the, the advice has been really nothing in the middle. Like you, it's kind of been polar opposites, whether it's, hey, don't go, to law, don't go into law school having studied enjoy the summer, read some books, enjoy time with your family because you'll need it. But then there's also people who have recommended, you know, read those prep books, might as well get ahead. Like, you know, these kids are going to be super, super competitive, especially online. So um, I have no idea. It's kind of frustrating because I don't know what's going to be the best, but I guess I'll just have to do whatever I think is better. But ultimately, everyone's going to start from the beginning somewhat. Like no one's gone to law school yet. That's the whole point of going into law school. That's cool. It's cool to take that approach and make the most of the summer that you have. And I feel like that was kind of a mentality that you took back when we were working together. And I guess I should have prefaced our conversation with the fact mm -hmm. that we worked together intensively one-on-one -on -one to prepare yeah. you for the LSAT. And I felt, thought that you struck a really good balance between being committed to the process without mm -hmm. letting it completely take over your life to the point of burnout. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I look back and that process was in the fall semester of my senior year. So that was last year, but uh, that was, yeah, that, honestly, that was a good point. I think uh, knowing the schedule that you gave me and knowing that I had work to do most of the days was great, but I knew that after a certain time I was to go home, 
enjoy some time with friends, enjoy some time just with good company and everything. And I think it was a good balance, but by no means was it easy, but it definitely was a much more efficient and much more like effective approach. I remember. Yeah, definitely. So let's, yeah. so we're speaking now, beginning of July, you've got law school about a month, month and mm -hmm. a half away from now, but to zoom back in time, it was fall semester of last year, fall 2019. You were studying for the LSAT and putting together, mm -hmm. together your applications. Do you want to share just a little bit about what that process was like for you? Yeah, of course. And I, um, I, I always love sharing this stuff because I think it can really help students. Um, I kind of started this whole law school process um, you know, a couple years back when I was interested in it. But the whole process really began officially um, in, I guess, the beginning of 2019 in January when I started studying for the LSAT itself. Uh, I used some other test prep programs and I was planning for March, but I ended up taking it in July, still wasn't ready. And uh, that kind of pushed me back because I wanted to send in all my applications by October to be early. You know, all the advice that you yourself and other industry professionals have given us is that earlier is better for sure. I mean, even though it's kind of like not as more, not as important, I'd say nowadays, but still that kind of set me back. And so I, I realized I had to study really differently and really like much more efficiently and effectively. So I began that process again in September during my fall senior year. And that's where I actually came across you and we worked together. And for those two months or so, we worked together one-on-one -on -one and I ended up taking it in November, which allowed me to still apply by January like 6th. Uh, I still sent in all my applications to the California school that I wanted to go to. And I threw in four more at the end of January just because, hey, why not? It's still time to. And um, that was the process. But who, if I had known coronavirus was to hit and that I'd have a little more time, I'd say, I might have retaken again because the LSAT flex uh, is definitely favorable for some students, including myself, I think. And so um, I don't regret anything. I'm happy to go to Loyola with the amazing amount of money they've given me. But uh, if I look back, there are definitely some things I wish I had known ahead of time. That would have been really helpful. Yeah, for sure. There's always more you wish you could have done. And maybe, yeah, with COVID, you could have retaken it. But you still got a ton of scholarship money and feel free to disregard the specifics if you want to, but I'm sure folks would be interested just to get a sense of what mm -hmm. the magnitude of those LSAT scholarships could be like. Are you willing to share anything about that? Yeah, I'm pretty transparent with the scores. I think that'll be pretty helpful. Um, I mean, LSAT score wise, I was able to increase from a 154 to a 164. Uh, thanks to you, Steve. I mean, I always give credit to, um, to when we work together, like the, the nuances of figuring out not only the LSAT, but also the mental approach and not getting psyched out by certain things and, and things like that. Even like the getting the music stuck in my head was a huge thing that we figured out. Um, but in terms of scholarship money too, yeah, essentially I'm paying almost little to nothing actually to Loyola, maybe a few thousand dollars, I think. Um, I would say it's one of the, the their bigger scholarships they give out. I don't know how many other students were able to get it, but um, I mean, as long as I'm I don't think there's any repercussions for me talking about it. Um, it's a great opportunity that I got. And I know that um, other T14s or higher schools that might have, you know, given me no money, but still acceptance. I don't know if I would, I don't know. That's a tough decision because especially with COVID and, you know, family circumstances and trying to keep debt lower. Uh, I was really blessed, honestly, to be given this opportunity to go with essentially no money um, from my pocket, you know. That's incredible. And you say, you say it so matter-of-factly, but I think it's actually huge. And most people don't realize how important this is. The debate over scholarships versus prestige, scholarships versus the rankings. I mean, we didn't open this video talking about Harvard Law, but mm -hmm. Loyola paying little to, little to nothing in some mm -hmm. ways, in some situations could be better depending on your circumstances, depending on your goals. But to pay yeah. almost nothing for law school and save hundreds of thousands of dollars from increasing your LSAT score 10 points, is, a, yeah. is incredible. That's a lot yeah, of money honestly, per point. I, I, you're totally right. And when you, I know you preach that to students that the, just taking the LSAT again to get that, not even to get into a higher school, but just more scholarship money is a, is a really good thing to point out because uh, 154 might not even have gotten me admission into Loyola, honestly, but uh, studying a few more months and getting a 164, that not only unlocked many other schools are amongst its caliber, but unlocked a lot of scholarship money. And um, frankly, I know that I want to practice in LA. And so Loyola being a great LA powerhouse school and has a great alumni network, like it honestly worked out for the best. And um, I truly mean it for anyone watching. Like if you just study hard, 
to have, stay faithful, like things will work out in a really weird way. Because back in November, when I was working with Steve, I, I was pretty stressed and I didn't think that I'd be in the position I am now. Yeah. And that just to call out again, the length of time you put into this, like I helped you and we talked, we worked together, but at the same time, you were at this for a long time, even before we started together. You mentioned January of 2019, mm -hmm. all yeah. the way through to November, right? So nearly an entire yeah. year you mm -hmm. were focused on this. Crazy. I know it's been a long time. And, you know, granted, I studied during school. So people might say, hey, you could have done better maybe if you just did it, um, you know, during the summer after senior year. But frankly, I've had this debate with a lot of other students. Um, I think now is the time to enter, especially with coronavirus and a lot of things changing. Uh, attorney work is going to be really helpful and really necessary. And uh, I think you've mentioned it in a lot of your podcasts and YouTube videos, but um, there's the opportunity cost. You know, if you uh, don't go into this cycle, then the next cycle might be even more competitive and you might get less money or things like that. I mean, it's not a guarantee, but uh, it's something I had to really think about. And, you know, I think this is ultimately the best decision for me. Yeah. Yeah. There's always going to be pros and cons, but it's important to really at least think them through fully, not to just go based on gut instinct or emotion alone, because there are trade-offs and the repercussions of any choice are pretty large, especially when mm -hmm. we're talking about the opportunity cost of salary, as well as the, just the cost of tuition itself. Sure. Of course. Now, one thing we didn't talk about and feel free mm -hmm. to cover only the details you want to, but yeah. we didn't touch on GPA and we didn't touch on parts of the application, like the personal statement. Yeah. Well, what role, do, if any, do you think those played in your application, either to help or to hurt or anything in between? That's a, that's a great point. And, you know, I'm, again, happy to share. I don't think there's any reason why I can't share, personally. Um, so I got a 3.73 GPA from uh, UC Berkeley. But uh, I think calculated through LSAC, I got a 3.74. So um, that helped me by, you know, getting that 0 0.01 boost. But I mean, the GPA was good because for Loyola and other schools, a 3.7 was in the 75th percentile. So uh, that helped me as well in terms of scholarship money and looking like a competitive applicant. Um, and in terms of the personal statement, I think that was that's actually a really underrated area that people forget on. I have been stressing this to maybe three or four other people that I'm currently just kind of helping as a friend in terms of the law school process is that your personal statement is where you can really differentiate yourself. And personally, I think that's the reason why I got waitlisted at schools such as Berkeley, where like my scores were clearly under both the 25th percentile. And I don't know if I'll get in or not off the waitlist, but the fact that I think I had a personal statement and a why Berkeley that really showed them, hey, this, this guy really cares about Berkeley and wants to be here. I think that made the difference, um, along with letters of rec I got from professors that went to Berkeley. So it, I don't know, it's always going to be a, a question in my mind, but it seems like a, a logical thing, I think, that the, the personal statement helped a lot. Yeah, I would certainly imagine so. Mm -hmm. So let's bring it back to the present day now. We're looking ahead towards Loyola maybe being online this fall. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling about the prospect of online law school? And what have you heard about maybe the spring semester or just your experience hearing from others? Um, so we have like a law school um, or loyal law school kind of like class of 2023 group chat. So the com we're actually having these conversations every day. So uh, I definitely have a lot to share. And I think I can kind of represent the voices of, you know, maybe a few hundred students or not, but we're all pretty, you know, uncertain about things. We, some of us are excited that it's going to be online because we can, you know, be safe and not have to risk ourselves to exposure from other students. Uh, a lot of us are definitely bummed that it's not going to be in person because as anyone knows, 1L is such a social, such a vibrant experience in your law school career. Um, but I think the overall consensus is that, including myself, is that we're all pretty bummed it's online. Uh, we, want it, we want it to be in person, but we're going to respect whatever decision Loyola makes and whatever the CDC and WHO make because uh, they know what's best and and we need to stay healthy eventually. I mean, a lot of us are going to live at home. I mean, I'm, I'm living at home for at least the first semester um, if it's online or hybrid because uh, luckily I'm, I live like maybe 30, 45 minutes away. And uh, I have, you know, parents to think about. They're, um, they're in their mid-60s and I need to make sure that they're healthy as well. Yeah, definitely. Well, it sounds like you're taking a very reasonable, prudent course of action with it. And hopefully things will improve over the next several months. And so the spring or beyond at least will be better, we'll hope. Yeah, I was in this uh, to touch on your question of if it's going to be online spring. I mean, I have no idea, but 
uh, based on my look on, you know, the CNN and like CBS and websites like that, you know, if we don't have a vaccine, I think by the spring, it's tough to say what it'll be. Um, so I have no idea. And that's why, although I wish Loyola and other schools um, could give an answer soon, I also respect what they're doing and, and don't blame them because they themselves have no idea what to do. So it's, you know, it's unfortunate, but you got to understand that it's, it's a hard situation for everyone. Yeah, everyone's doing their best with imperfect information, and I'm sure they would do it in person if they thought they could. But mm -hmm. then there would also be a massive disruption cost if they had to switch midway through. And then, of course, if someone mm -hmm. got sick or worse, there are not only liability issues, but just basic moral issues to, to contend with. And so mm -hmm. I wouldn't fault anyone for being online in this situation. I think it's probably the best course of action for all schools for this fall. Yeah, and I mean, just and you've probably been following the news too. And I know uh, you have a Facebook group too, where people also post, you know, things about latest news and stuff. There's definitely been a wave of schools that are going online, and so I I wouldn't be surprised in the next weeks or so to see a trend of you know, okay, we're going online too because, um, like you said, morally and also health wise and ethically, it may, it'd be tough to go in person and then having someone get sick and all that stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, Kenny, any, this has been a blast. Anything else you want to share or advice for pre-law applicants before we wrap up this conversation? And then I'd love to do another one down the line to update mm -hmm. folks on your law school journey. Yeah, no, I, I, on any video you want to do, please let me know. I love these kind of things. So looking forward to that. But for anyone watching or listening, um, first of all, I mean, Steve's been a great resource for me. So please, you know, have trust in him. Uh, he's pretty much dedicated his life to this, you know, so, um, so trust in what he's saying. It really helped me. And if there's one piece of advice, it's that don't be afraid to, I'd say, retake the LSAT if you, if you feel like you need to, because that advice for me, uh, not only got me acceptance into a school that I'm so, so excited to go to, but it gave me so much more scholarship money that kind of made me feel like I was in control of the process. And now I'm confident that, I don't have to worry about the money when I go into school. I can worry about getting good grades, meeting great friends and colleagues, and really excelling and doing what I want to do. So, um, yeah, just focus on the LSAT. I think, I think all the, although the other parts of the application are important, like the LSAT is is pretty important. So um, don't stress, but definitely take your time and, and try your best on it. Definitely, Kenny. Couldn't agree more. Well, thank you again for having this conversation with me. All the best as you start law school in August and stay safe and we'll do an update in a few months. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.